welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be doing a dragon wall mount. I haven't done one before and I thought it'd be something really fun to try and it'd look really cool on the wall. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm going to start on the wooden base for our dragon mount. So my idea for this is I wanted it to kind of look crystal-like, almost like a geode. So I'm going to try and use a lot of purples and pinks and stuff like that. I might even throw in some gold accents. So I've already primered my wood with a white paint. I probably did like one or two layers and then I let it dry. So I'm going to start by painting the outer part of the oval a nice black color. After that, I'm going to take a really dark purple and I'm going to start painting around the board. I'm keeping it slightly away from the black because I'm not ready to mix until I have all my purple down. And then I'm going to take my brush and start blending. And then I'm going to take pink and I'm going to fill in the rest of the oval and then I'm going to blend it into the purple. After I have my pink down, I'm going to take some white paint before the pink has dried and I'm going to start blending it into the middle of the oval. This way I can kind of lighten up the pink and have it get darker as it gets closer to the purple. After that, I'm going to take some glitter paint and I'm going to go around the oval kind of decorating it. I'm going to do the same thing with a purple modeling paint that's got a nice sheen to it to kind of give it a different texture look. And then I'm going to take a gold modeling paint and I'm going to go over it, kind of just drawing little squiggles and stuff, trying to make it look like a stone that has like cracks running through it and it's got veins of gold through it. After all of my paint for this has dried, I'm going to go over it with resin. So I mixed up a really big batch and I just poured it on top and then spread it out with my paintbrush. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then we can start on other things. And while our resin is drying, I'm going to start on making the clay pieces for our dragon. I'm going to start on making the horns. This is a really simple way to make some horns. I cut out some pieces of wire to the length that I want my horns, and then I'm going to take some clay and roll it out, and we're going to push that wire through the clay and make sure the wire is completely covered. Once you have it completely covered and nicely shaped, you're going to take that clay and you're going to twist it around the wire and this is going to create kind of a spiraling effect in the horn. I really like making horns this way because it's a super easy way to get a nice detailed horn. So I'm going to make a large pair and a kind of small pair and then I'm going to put both of these in the oven probably for about 30 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Okay, our horns are out of the oven and have cooled to touch, and I actually want to make more than just two pairs of horns. I want to make a bunch of them, but I don't want to have them all made out of clay. I want to have them kind of look translucent, so I'm going to actually make them out of resin. So to make my resin horns, I'm actually going to be using some Play-Doh to use as a modeling agent. Now, a while back, I actually made a video kind of showing how to do this, but with claws. So, um, it's kind of the same thing. The only thing different is because the horn itself, it's twisted. You can't just push it into the clay and then pull it out. We're going to have to twist it into the clay like a screw and then twist it out. That way we can get the twisted pattern on our resin horns. So I'm going to make six horns this way. I'm using blue to make four of them, and then I'm trying out a purple to make two other ones. And now I know the blue ones will actually stain the resin and I really want that to happen because I want to create a kind of translucent blue horn. I want to do the same thing with the purple but I'm not sure if that will actually turn out. We'll find out if it actually will stain it the color or not. Now Play-Doh will actually dry if you leave it out so we're going to have to put all of these in a large Tupperware and seal it up. So we're going to leave our resin to cure overnight and then we can check to see how the horns came out. Okay, it's the following day and we can see how our horns came out. So you're just going to pry off all the Play-Doh. You're going to have a lot stuck to it, so you'll probably need to rinse this off with some soap and water. And afterwards, you can see how nice your horns are. So for some reason, the resin didn't get stained by the purple Play-Doh. I'm really not sure. I left it in the same amount of time as the blue. The blue obviously took the color, but the purple just didn't want to go for some reason. So we're probably going to end up painting these ones or something. Okay, now I'm going to move on to sculpting the face for the dragon. I'm actually going to do the head first, and then I'm going to wait on the neck until after we're completely done with the face. I'm doing this mainly just to make it a lot easier on myself. 
Okay, so to start, I'm gonna take a large amount of tin foil and I'm gonna roll it out until I get kind of a cone shape. I'm doing this because the style that I want for this dragon is kind of based off of the cartoon version of Maleficent. I wanted something a lot more sleek and thin and kind of like lizard-like. I didn't want to go for a very bulky head, so that's why I'm doing a cone shape. If you were to do something a lot more bulkier, I would have recommended doing something round or even square for it. So I'm just going to cover my tin foil with a nice layer of clay and then smooth the surface once it's covered. Once I'm happy with the basic shape of it, I'm going to decide where I want the eyes to go. I'm going to push my thumbs into the clay to mark it, and then I'm going to take two balls of clay and I'm going to push those in where those spots are. I'm going to take a little bit more clay to start building up a cheekbone and then I'm going to start taking strips of clay to make the under eyelid and then I'm going to move on to making the top eyelid. After that I'm going to move on to making the mouth for the dragon. So I'm just going to use one of my tools and I'm going to roughly draw on the clay where I want the line for the mouth to go. After I'm happy with the layout for that I'm just going to smooth out that line so it looks a lot more crisp and easier to work with and then I'm going to take pieces of clay and lay them out where I want the teeth to be. For the clay pieces that I'm placing, I'm going to roll them a little bit between my fingers to create a point at one end so it looks a lot more like a tooth. I'm going to place all the teeth where I want them to be, I'm going to smooth them out a little bit so they look correct, and then I'm going to use strips of clay to make the lips to start building up the mouth around the teeth. The whole time I'm doing this, I'm using that line that we drew as a guide for where the lips are going to meet. Now for the nose of the dragon, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to kind of pinch the end of the snout a little bit to decide where I want the nostrils to go. This is just going to roughly shape it and then I'm going to use my tools to kind of push into the clay to create some divots for the nostrils. Now the strips of clay that I'm adding to the face kind of look like whiskers right now, but that's not really what I'm going for. I'm going for kind of creating a little bit of a crease in the skin to make it look kind of like the dragon is snarling a little bit. So it's kind of just a little wrinkle in the skin that I'm making. Now that I have the basic layout and all the main details done on the dragon, I'm going to start on all the scale work. So I'm going to use my tools to create nice little line works. This is very detailed and you want to kind of change the different shapes. You don't want to have all the scales the same thing because most reptiles have different shaped scales in different places on their face and body. So the whole time I'm sculpting, I'm kind of just messing around with different shapes to see if I like them. The main thing I took into account while placing the scales on the face of the dragon was the parts of the face that move a lot would end up naturally having smaller scales so it was easier to move the skin. So as I was around like the mouth and stuff I made sure those were nice and small and as I moved further back towards like the back of the head or the neck they got larger because you didn't need as much movement so the scales could be larger and more protective. The last thing I did to the face after I got all the details done was I straightened up where the neck was. So I kind of smoothed it out and I cut away all the extra clay. Now I'm just going to put this in the oven at like 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45 to 55 minutes. Okay, now I'm going to start working on the neck of the dragon. So the first thing we need is the base for the dragon's neck. This is the part that's going to connect to the wooden board that we're going to mount the dragon onto. So the best thing is to make sure this is wood. That way you can drill through it. So I'm using this little wooden square right now. I drilled two holes through it and I'm going to be running some wire through those holes and wrapping it and shaping it into the shape that I want the neck to be. Once I was happy with the shape and length of the wire for the neck, I connected the head to the end of it with a little hot glue. Now I'm going to take a lot of tin foil and I'm going to start wrapping it around that wire. I'm going to make sure to have the base of the neck really thick and I'm going to thin it out as we get closer to the head. You'll end up needing a lot of tin foil for this, but luckily tin foil is actually pretty cheap. Once you're happy with how thick your neck is, you can move on to adding the clay and working on the sculpting. So I'm going to start by making the scales for the very front of the neck. So I'm just rolling out large strips of clay and I'm going to layer them over each other until I get to the very top. To help make this look more natural, as you get closer and closer to the head, make sure your strips of clay become smaller and smaller. 
Now for my dragon, I'm not adding clay to the back of the neck because I am not going to be sculpting any of that part. I'm going to be covering that in fake fur. Now because half of my neck is going to be fur and half of it's going to be scales, you're going to have a seam. So to help hide that seam, I'm going to put a strip of clay down the whole side of the neck on both sides. This way I have something to tuck the fur into when we add it to kind of hide that seam. So now we pretty much have all the clay laid out that we're going to use for the neck and now we can start adding all the details to it. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the face. Any part of the neck that we think is going to move a lot, we're going to make those details a lot smaller and kind of softer. So I'm going to make the wrinkly parts of the skin first and then I'm going to move on to all the plates on the very front because that's probably going to be where the dragon would naturally have a lot more armor. All I'm doing to make the scales for the front of the neck is I'm taking one of my tools and I'm using it on those strips of clay that we laid out and I'm separating it to make individual scales. So I'm just putting little lines in it. Once I have my scales marked out, I'm going to use my other tools to kind of lift and separate the scales to create kind of a more 3D effect. And then once I was done with all the sculpting, it's time to bake our dragon. So I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 55 minutes. Now we can start on the painting. I'm going to start on the horns first. So what I did was I took all of the horns off of the wires that we originally built them on and I glued them to some cardboard. That way I could lay them all out and we can paint them and they could stand straight up and be resined afterwards. So for the painting on the blue resin ones, I went over them a few times with some silver glitter paint, just to add a little bit of sparkle to them. For the two resin horns that didn't come out exactly how I wanted, I'm going to go over them with a gold modeling paint. And then for the original horns that are made out of clay, I'm going to go over one pair with a nice pink and then the other pair with a purple. After all of my paint on my horns have dried, I'm going to go over everything with a layer of resin to help lock in the paint and protect everything. Okay, our dragon is done baking, it's cool to touch, and we can start on the painting for that. So for the colors that I want to use, I want to use some blues, pinks, and purples. I'll also be throwing in some gold too. So for each area that I want a certain color, I'm going to primer them those colors. So the chest I'm going to have mainly blue, and then the sides are going to be pink along with the main part of the neck, and then the head I want to be purple. So I'm going to go over all those areas with a primer for that color. Now for the painting for this dragon, I'm using a couple of my paints that have a bit of a pearl essence to them just to give it a bit more of a sparkle or a shine to it. So for example, like the scales on the chest, I'm going over that with a white pearl essence and then I'm just blending it into the blue. So it just has a little bit of a fade from a really bright shine to a little bit of a blue shine. And then most of the painting for the face was just adding the other colors that I wanted to incorporate into it. Like I wanted to bring some of the blues that are in the chest, so I did a few of the scales that color, and then just vice versa. And then for the eyes, I didn't do a whole lot of detail. I kept them really simple because I wanted the majority of the details to be in the scale patterns. So all I did was I painted them black, I let that dry, and then I went over adding the details for the pupil and maybe a little bit of white paint for a highlight. And then once I was happy with the coloring of the scales, I let that dry, and then once that was dried, I went over the piece with a little bit of that gold modeling paint that we used earlier. I didn't add a whole lot of gold, I just wanted to add enough so it made sense for the dragon to have gold horns and for there to be gold on the board. It helped tie everything together a bit more. After that, I let all the paint dry, and once all the paint was dried, I mixed up a batch of resin, that way we could coat the rest of the dragon with it. So I just used a brush and I painted on a thin layer of resin over the whole dragon. I let this dry overnight, and then afterwards we can add the fur to it. 
To add the fur, I just roughly measured the back of the neck for the dragon. It doesn't matter if you get this perfect or not because you can always add a piece or you can end up cutting some of it off if it doesn't fit right. So I'm just going to use my hot glue gun and I'm going to start gluing the fur onto the back of the neck. When you get close to where the clay is, you'll just end up kind of pushing in the fur to make it kind of go under the clay. Now I'm just going to glue the horns onto the dragon where I want them. Once I have all those placed, I'm just going to glue fur in between the horns to help hide all the seams. And then once the dragon is done, we just need to connect it to the board. To connect the dragon to the board, I'm just going to use my power drill and I'm going to drill a few holes and then I'm going to use some screws to connect the two pieces together. Okay guys, and that's how I did a dragon wall mount. I had so much fun with it. I was kind of going for either a galaxy dragon or something more on the line of a geode or crystal dragon. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed today's project. If so, leave me a like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!